Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to Fountain of Blessings and our series on Joshua 6. And remember, Jesus is the way. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat Today, shalom. Today's lesson is Joshua 6. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all of the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up. Everyone straight in. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of him. And he ordered the army, advance, march around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Lord. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets and the Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets and the rear guard followed the ark. All this time, the trumpets were sounding. But Joshua had commanded the army, do not give a war cry. Do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. Then shout. So he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it once. Then the army returned to the camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests, carrying the seven trumpets, went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them, and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord, while the trumpets kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet's blast, Joshua commanded the army, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city 
and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab, the prostitute, and all who are with her in her house shall be spared, because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted things, so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble upon it. All the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into the treasury. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in and they took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword every living thing in it, men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, go into the prostitute's house and bring her out and all who belong to her in accordance with your oath to her. So the young man who had done the spying went in and brought out Rahab, her father and mother, her brothers and sisters, and all who belonged to her. They brought out her entire family and put them in a place outside the camp of Israel. Then they burned the whole city and everything in it. But they put the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. But Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute, with her family and all who belonged to her, because she hid the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho, and she lives among the Israelites to this day. Amen. At that time, Joshua pronounced his solemn oath, cursed before the Lord is the one who undertakes to rebuild this city, Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son, he will lay its foundation. At the cost of its youngest, he will set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout the land. Amen. 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 All right. Well, welcome to Fountain of Blessing. This is our series on Joshua. I think this is going to be an exciting journey, so please sit down, enjoy the ride. We're going to be looking at Joshua 6, and most of us are pretty much aware of Joshua 6 because we're thinking about the um, Israelites walking around this city all these times. And, and, you know, when I was looking at that, I said, I just don't want to deliver this, this particular um, sermon just looking at that. But I think there's something that we can get from there. Well, the first thing I want us to remember is that um, before the Israelites even started to walk around the city, the people were already afraid of them. Let's just let's start right there. There was already fear in the camp, and they were already defeated in their hearts. That's right. So now Joshua, being a man of God, um, is faced with conquering this city with this impenetrable wall. And so we want to look at six things, five things about Joshua and what they did. First of all, the first thing we're going to look at is the confrontation. All right. The confrontation that Joshua had is with the angel of the Lord. So you remember before the angel of the Lord came, Joshua was praying and he realized, God, I cannot do this in myself. Amen. I need some help. I, don't, I have a lot of men. I have a lot of resources. But this wall is impenetrable. I need your help. So what happened was that God sent his soldier okay. for the army of the Lord, and he came and he talked to Joshua. First of all, I want you to realize this. The discussion that Joshua had with the, with the servant of the Lord was not like the same argument or the confrontation or the same arrangement that Moses had with God. You remember when Moses was talking to God and God said, I want you to go. Moses gave every excuse under the sun why he couldn't do it. <laughs> but God eventually told him to shut up and go tell him that I am, that I am has sent you. Now, when you begin to look at, um, when you look at Joshua, there was no confrontation there. So when the angel of the Lord encountered Joshua, there was no debate like Moses. 
at the burning bush with God, the servant did not come to hear a soliloquy. The confrontation was not a meeting of the equals. Joshua, remove your shoes for where you are standing is holy ground. So immediately the angel of the Lord told him, this is the way it's going to be. So when the angel began to sit down and talk to, when the angel talked to Joshua, he told him exactly what was going to happen. He said, this is the plan. I want you to do the plan that I've given you, and I don't want you to deviate from the left or to the right. Do exactly what I've, what I've told you to do. Amen. However, wasn't this the same thing that God told Joshua when he took over Moses' position? Do whatever I tell you to do and follow the word. Amen. So Joshua is just really falling in line and marching to the order. But one of the things I have to think about, though, in this great confrontation, Joshua being a military man, and when the angel told him, I want you all to take, I want you to have, I want you to have angel, I want you to have warriors, I want you to have the ark, I want you to have ram horns, and then I want you to have warriors, seven priests and all that. They have never done that before. So you want me to have ram horns, seven priests, some of the fighting men in front of them, and then some of the fighting men in back of them, don't say a word and do this how many times? Six times. And then on the seventh time, do it six more times, and then it's going to be good. Okay, sure, fine, whatever you say. And I know that Joshua had to have in his mind, this is bonkers. <laughs> but he's not going to say this because he came to the reality, I have the angel of the Lord telling me exactly what I need to do, so I'm going to do this. So I really believe that Joshua, when he was hearing this, he was somewhat confused and baffled. But however, whatever confusion he had, whatever, whatever he was dealing with internally, whenever he talked to his people, it was done. Amen. It was done. So that's the great confrontation. However, one of the things I love about Joshua and let's look at the humanness of it. Joshua is going to fight a different way than he ever had fought before. So that lets you know the ways of God and the ways of man are totally different. That's right. And in doing that, Joshua had, to, Joshua had to rest in the fact that the God that he served, the Moses, that, the Moses God that he has served, is the God that's going to deliver them, is the God that's going to do what he said he's going to do. So now I want you to imagine that Joshua just received this. So now he's got to convince, which is the second step, he's got to convince his people this is what God wants them to do. Now you got to remember, they have been fighting battles on the other side of the Jordan. Okay. And they won all those battles by the hand of God. Amen. Now they're crossing over to Jordan. This is their first battle on the other side of Jordan. All right. So God was telling them to do this a different way. So the first thing Joshua did, he didn't go to his fighting men. He went to the priest. He okay. said, priest, I know y'all never, you have never, ever fought in war with us. But this is what you all are going to do today. I need seven of you to blow the horn, and I need some of you to carry the ark. Could you imagine what those priests were saying? We never done that before. I mean, we, we, we don't mind participating in the spoils, but you want us to go out there and fight? Oh, yeah, you know. But I think even though the priests heard what Joshua was saying, I can't help but believe those were the same priests that were there when Joshua said, now, I want you to take the ark and walk to the Jordan River. Those were the same priests that stood on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan River. They are the same priests that stood there when, the, when, when all of Israel walked before them on dry ground. Amen. So I was thinking with them, they was like, hey, you know, he is working in the power of Moses. Amen. So if God told him that, then surely God had told him what we should do. Amen. So I, then, then when you begin to look at it, though, not only did he have to convince the priests, then he had to convince the fighting men, the, the army, his army, his commanders. And I like what he did. 
He didn't ask them for an opinion. He didn't tell them what, 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 he didn't get the, he didn't get with them to strategize. Matter of fact, if you read the scripture, he never told them who told him that. He said, the army, this is what you're going to do. I want a group of men in front of the ark, and I want a group of men in back of the ark. Now, these were the same men, because you, let's, let's go back, let's, let's wind the clock back. These were the same men that said, we will go where you send us, we will do what you tell us, because we know that God is with you. Amen. And this is one of those things about convincing, and this is what we have to know. When God tells us to do something, especially when it's an impossible task, like destroying an impenetrable wall, God is going to send people around the way to encourage you and believe what God has called you to do. So now Joshua, not only had not only has he convinced the priest, but now he has convinced his war, his warriors and the commanders of his army that this is going to happen. But now, you know, you can give an order and soldiers still have to follow this. So this is where I, I like to look at in the weeds. Now, I can see the commanding officers telling the men this is the plan. And they're looking, we got the ladders, we got the torches, we got the, the board, we got everything we need to scale this wall. And they said, no, 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 we're not scaling walls this time. What? How are we going to get over the wall? The, this is the plan. We are going to walk around the city six times, quietly. No noise, and only noise you're going to hear would be the, the, the priest blowing the ram's horn. So right now, can I get a ram horn blowing for me, please, so they can hear what that sound like? Here we go. We got the ram horn going. That's all you're going to hear. We're going to walk around it one time for six days, and then on the seventh day, we're going to do it six times. Let's hear the ram horn again. And I can see them looking at Joshua and going, what, what? Okay, the ram horn is going to blow. We're not going to talk. We're not going to do nothing. Just walk around this city. So I believe as the men began to follow, you can't help but think of human nature that somebody was back there grumbling and complaining. Not, not in line, but before they had to go walking, somebody said, we're going to get killed. <laughs> They're going to be throwing stuff at us. If I was them, I'd be throwing everything. Is this dude crazy? But however, they were able to do what Joshua asked them to do. Now, this is where you see that the people have skin in the game. Everybody can believe God for the big things. Amen. Everybody can believe God when they say, yeah, we can do this. However, the commitment comes when we have to walk around the wall every day once. Mm. Now, imagine how this felt. This is where the commitment comes in. This is where the servant of God really shines. This is where you have to put it on the line and either trust God or not trust God. Now, remember, you're walking around this wall quietly, not making a word, not making a sound. Only thing they're hearing is the horn again. Daily. On the first day, these men had to trust God that these people would not throw stuff at them, would not throw spears, would not shoot arrows, would not throw boulders. Matter of fact, not even come out of the camp and attack them. They had to believe that each and every day. Now, you tell me, was that easy to do? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think that kind of commitment was easy for them, for each individual, because each individual had to commit in his own heart that I'm going to be quiet, that I'm not going to complain, that I am going to stay focused on what we need to do and not make a word and just only hear the horn. 
And each person in their own heart. Now think about, these are thousands and thousands and thousands of men. And he said, not to make a sound. Each individual had to commit in their heart that God is going to bring us through this. And they did that and they made that commitment each and every day. So you see them walking around. Now, think about this. To be able to do that, each person, let's not, let's, not, let's not take this lightly, each person had to be focused on the God of heaven. Each person had to be committed in their own way to say, I'm going to follow this God. Each person had to say, I don't care what this person to my left does or this person to my right does. I'm going to stay true. I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to march. I'm going to march not in fear, but in praise because I know the God I serve Amen. has delivered us before. Hallelujah. I know the God that I serve has helped us to fight battles before the Jordan. And I know the God that I serve can look at this wall and imagine now. Now, I want you to use your imagination. Imagine what the people on the wall were saying. Even though their hearts were filled with fear, you get really brave when you're behind a big wall. And I can see them jeering at them, laughing at them. You know, look, look at those idiots. I bet they even thought we could come out of this wall and beat them ourselves. But they're listening to all of this, but still quietly doing what God said. And they only walked once every day. Could you imagine how the, 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 Jer the Jericho people felt? All right, let's get ready for this battle. Here they come. <laughs> Blow the horn again. And you can see, and you can see the generals of Jericho going like, okay, this is a new fighting strategy. And then they left. Okay. They did it again, and they left. I'm quite sure after the fifth time, they said, I think they're scared. I think they're scared of us. And not only do I think they're scared of us, I don't believe the God that they share is going to deliver them. But see, this is the thing about that commitment. When you have that commitment to the enemies, to the people that are against you, to everyone that is, that is on the opposite side of you, it looks as if you're doing nothing. Mm. All you're doing is following the instructions that were already given. Because they already know what the end is because the who? The angel of the Lord told them what to do. And see, the thing is, this is where the challenge comes in. When you're walking around that wall, it's very easy as a participant to get discouraged. It's very easy to get into your own brain. Even though you're all fighting the same cause and you're walking that same line, it's very easy day after day looking at that wall and not seeing a weakness in that wall. Wow. And then hearing people tell you stuff. That, that, that's the challenge. That's that inner demon that you have to fight. And when that happens, this is what they had to do because God already, the angel of the Lord already told him, it is not about you, it's just about God. Amen. God is going to do to, to Jericho what he did to Egypt. Why? To bring across his name and to let people know that Joshua is my servant. So the reason why the ark was there, so when the men were walking quietly along and then they felt stupid, they felt idiotic, they felt like nothing was going to work out right, even though they're just marching. Why are we just marching? Someone said, look at the ark. Amen. You know, they didn't say that, but they... Look at the ark. Amen. The ark showed that God's presence was with them. Amen. The ark showed that God is a powerful God. The ark showed them that whatever God wanted to do, he can do it. Amen. So it gave them more strength to walk that walk. Amen. Why? Because God's right there. Amen. I can do that because my big brother's right there. Amen. I can fight this battle because he's going to win it. Amen. Not me. Hallelujah. See, that's the thing I love about Joshua. Joshua realized, first of all, I can't do this battle. When we have a wall, an impenetrable wall, we have to fall on our knees just like Joshua. Yeah, I won some battles before, but this one, I don't see any way of winning this one. 
You can have all the people in the world working for you, but it won't work because you need a God solution. Hallelujah. And what Joshua, what God, what the angel of the Lord showed Joshua, I got a God solution for this because Jericho was already marked for destruction. And a lot of us, when we're facing impenetrable wall, those walls, those people, those friends, those enemies, whatever you want to call them, are already marked for destruction. Hallelujah. All we have to do is follow the plan. Amen. Follow the plan. Amen. Now, this is what happened. As they walked around the wall for the sixth day. Mm. Now, you know the seventh day was the Sabbath. And that Jericho is the first victory that the Israelites were going to experience. So they dedicated that first victory to who? The to the Lord. Amen. To the Lord. Hold on, let me, let me get a little bit more drink here. Amen. Mm. Amen. Blow the horn and I have something going. Now, the first thing we talked about was the confrontation. The second thing was the convincing. The third thing was the commitment. The fourth thing was the challenge. And now the last thing is the conquest. Amen. Now, with the conquest comes this. On the day of the conquest, it looked like the same day. The Israelites have been doing this for seven days now. And I can imagine those guys sitting on the wall going, oh, here they come again. Here they come again. <laughs> They're going to walk around, blow the horn. Then they realize, oh, they're doing it more. Oh, okay. They're going to do it again. Man, this is hilarious. <laughs> to your enemies and to the people on the wall, it looks like nothing has changed. It looks like it's going to be business as usual. Mm. It looks as if you're just going to go back, back to camp. Mm. But no, no, no. They don't have to know what God's plan is. Matter of fact, they don't even notice a change in you. They didn't even notice a change in the army. You know why? Because when, when your enemies or when the wall is looking at you, it looks, as, it looks at you as insignificant. Mm. It looks at you as a loser. It looks at you as another, as another, um, how can I say this? As another person trying to get a victory. Mm. It's not afraid of you. Why should it be? For the last six days, all you've done was just walked around. But on the seventh day, though, you walked around once. You walked around twice. That's right. That's right. Hmm. Hmm. They still didn't catch on. You walked around a third time. Hmm. They're not even concerned because why? Because see, the thing is, the wall gets cocky. You ain't do nothing yet. You're not going to do anything. So why should I be afraid of you and your God? I don't have to. We're here. They walked around it a fourth time. They walked around it a fifth time. And they even walked around it a sixth time. And then they stood still. They're looking. I don't even think the people were even phased. Maybe they didn't even pay attention to it because they were hiding behind the wall. Because let me, let me make this literal for us. In each of our lives, there are walls that seem to be impenetrable, but they're not. There are people behind those walls that are holding that wall up. It is, it, it is, it is, it is forces behind that wall that's trying to convince you like a hologram that this wall is in, is impermeable, that it cannot be broken, that it, you can't scale this, it's so big. There is things behind that wall that gives you the impression that you can never break through it. Amen. But remember, we're looking for a God solution, Hallelujah. not a man solution. Hallelujah. And I see Joshua telling them, I can, I can, I see him going, now shout. Hallelujah. Now, imagine if you could, you have been pent up for six days. Mm. For some of you, you've been having your problem for six years, mm. 10 years, 20 years, five months, eight months, whatever that time is. I can see the Israelites when he says shout and that, and that horn was blowing. I really believe that as that horn was blowing, when they shouted, all the anxiety that they had came out. All the pain 
that they were feeling. Thank you. <laughs> All the pain that they were feeling came out. Amen. All the doubt that they had came out of their body, through their lips and outward. Hallelujah. And they were feeling such great release. The voice, the volume, everything that was in them that told them that they were nothing, that they were nobody, that they were going to fail, came out of their mouth as they shouted and said, God can do this. And they just shouted. And the voice of a thousand, a hundred thousand people shut up the wall. But you know something? Then God touched it. Amen. And the wall crashed down. They had to have skin in the game. They had to believe that God said, shout that that wall was going to fall down. And for us, think, I want you to think about that wall that you think that is impermeable. That something cannot be destroyed. I think you should shout at it. Amen. I think you should take days and say, I'm going to walk around this. Amen. I'm going to do six days and be quiet. And the only, only noise that they hear is the praise from your lips. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This wall is going to fall. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And, Thank and quoting Jesus. scriptures. Then he'll make that wall. Mm. He'll, he'll look at that wall. Mm. You'll look at that wall and say, God, I can't do this. I, I can't do this. Amen. And as you walk around that wall and you begin to praise God, you know, doubting him is not an option. Looking back at what he can't do is an option. But believing that God can do everything that he said he can do, that's the option. Amen. Then you begin to look around at your wall and you say, God, I'm going to shout. I can't wait to the seventh the seventh day. I'm going to shout. You know how I said, you know, what's that song say? Don't, don't wait for the battle to be over. Shout now. That's what you got to do. Amen. On that better song I like, this is my exodus. <laughs> and when you're walking around that wall and you begin to shout at that problem, I really believe that God's going to look at that and set you free. Amen. Give you freedom. Give you that promotion. Give you that thing that you need. Heal your body. Heal your marriage. Heal your situation. Whatever God's going to do, you, you're allowing him to do it because you're walking in faith, knowing that the God of heaven can break down any wall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. However, like Joshua said, this wall, this thing is dedicated to the Lord. Amen. So if this is the first wall that God has knocked down for you and it's a wall that you need to be knocked down, remember, don't take things, don't take credit mm -hmm. because that's like those defile things. Don't take those things that's going to bring um, desolation to the camp. Make sure you acknowledge God. Make sure you thank God. Make sure that becomes your testimony so that the fear of God will not only be in your life, but in the life of everyone that hears you. Because the Lord has given you that wall, that city, that deliverance, that freedom, that promotion, that healing. Those are the things that God can and will do if you allow him to help you to walk around that wall. Don't, don't sit there and, and when you're walking around that wall, thinking, oh, this is not going to happen. Do it in faith. Walk around the wall. Walk around your wall. And on that seventh day, on the seventh day, blow the ram's horn. And all of us together, let's shout. Ah! And watch your wall fall down. Amen. Amen. I really believe that this message is for someone that has a wall or a situation that appears to be in, 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 in unmovable. It's, it's, it's a wall that's bigger than you. Think about Joshua. I want you to think about the six steps here. Think about the six things Joshua had to do. First of all, he had the major confrontation. You already have, your wall is already afraid of you because it heard of what God can do. Not what you can do, but what God has done. Secondly, you, you have to convince yourself that it can be done. Amen. And how do you do that? Reading the word of God, knowing the promises, talking to saints that know God, that have experienced things, say, God's done this for me. The third thing, commit to it. 
in the midst of the walking, in the midst of the living, commit to it. Don't let, don't let bad thoughts come in your mind. Don't let, don't let doubt uh, sabotage you. Don't let those things stop you from looking up at the ark. Keep looking at the ark. The fourth thing, the challenge. The challenge is going to be there because you got skin in the game. You can lose it all or you can win it all. Amen. But I believe if you bet on God, you're going to win it all. And then the last thing is the conquest. Amen. When you go in and you and you defeat the enemy, don't take those desolate, don't take those defilable things. What are those defilable things for us? Not giving God praise. Mm-hmm. Not, pro- not, not coming through with the promise that we told God if you bring me through this. Mm. And last but not least, not worshiping God of heaven for allowing you to see another victory. So whatever your steps are, whatever you have to do on this day, looking at Joshua 6, remember. You got a wall? I know a wall breaker. Amen? Let's hear that horn again. And don't forget to shout. Ah! Blessings. Blessings. May the God of peace and God of love be with you throughout the day. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Bye.